With Arctic conditions gripping the UK, it's perfect timing for me to be given a Ford Ranger wild track to play with. But before we start putting it through its paces in the white stuff, I get a call out from the police. We were due to be filming later today anyway, but before I had a chance to uh, cut my hair and have a shave, we've had the police on the phone. There's been a road traffic collision involving a deer and obviously I was the only uh, deer warden that wanted to answer his phone this morning. So we've uh, got kitted up and uh, we're coming to try and find this deer. Apparently it's injured by the side of the road, so a potential danger to uh, two of the road users there. Um, but you know, our main concern is with the welfare of the animal and to get out as quickly as possible. Um, and if, it, if it's in distress, to dispatch it humanely and then uh, make sure we deal with the carcass appropriately. Dealing with this type of situation always calls for discretion. In the area where we've been told to come, there's a deer in there. Oh, yeah. Okay, let's find somewhere to turn around. Sometimes there are police attending and often the driver who hit the deer in the first place. My priority is to dispatch that deer as quickly and safely as possible. Is the deer in a position where it's safe to shoot it? Uh, is it close to someone's house? Are there people around? Um, and in this instance, uh, the deer was in a, a safe situation with a safe backdrop. There was no traffic on the road and there were no pedestrians on the road. So, the animal was also clearly alive. I want to make sure that that animal is put out of its misery as quickly as possible. Pulled in, blocking off the area where the deer is, put the hazard lights on, make the vehicle visible because obviously we don't want to cause any danger to other road users. Uh, and then it's a question of, you know, I've got the rifle with me, load up, shoot the deer, get it into the back of the vehicle, out of sight, get the gun away. And then, you know, we're being discreet, we're thinking about other people's feelings. Literally just after we'd uh, dispatched the deer, load it in the back of the truck, three girls walking down to the bus stop on their way to school. You know, they probably wouldn't have wanted to see an injured deer being shot. Um, so we have to be a little bit sensitive about that, even though, our, like I say, our, our primary concern is with the welfare of the deer. Our job is also to dispose of the carcass. So we head back to the yard to clean it up. It'll make perfect food for Colin's dogs. With the deer cleaned, we can get on with some of the jobs we've planned for the rest of the day. First stop is Ringdon Farm where they make apple juice. I've started experimenting with putting the apple pulp down for the wild boar at the high seas. It's really popular uh, with local farmers that use it for feeding the animals during the winter. And we thought, pigs love apples. Um, we might put a couple of bags of this down when we go uh, to feed the, the boar later. Um, just for something different. We normally feed cereals, uh, but this is kind of a bit of recycling um, and it seems a natural synergy. You know, apple sauce always goes well with pork, so we thought we'd give it a try. As I've mentioned before, the boar are having a hard time with no close season and too many guns. And we think the numbers are in free fall. Where we used to see groups of 30, we now see threes and fours. And if we didn't have to shoot them, we wouldn't. But we need to keep our landowners happy and there's no doubt that a sounder of boar can cause real damage to paddocks and gardens. We endeavour to only take young males which have no chance of breeding. Other shooters are not always so selective, unfortunately. Ooh. So we've come to the first of our uh, feed sites. And as you can see, there's pretty much nothing left, which is a good sign. Um, you know, we've been feeding quite heavily here. They haven't been feeding every single day, um, but I can smell there's been pigs here. Um, and obviously they've been before it froze last night by the looks of things. Um, so that's, uh, that's good news. We're gonna, we're gonna feed a, a couple of places here uh, and then we're gonna head off to our other high seat, which is uh, close by and see if the pigs have been there too. Okay, so this is the, uh, the apple pulp that we got from the, uh, from the juicing place earlier. Um, it's the first year we fed this but as you can see, you know, they, they'd pretty much cleared it. So it's a food source that they're prepared to, to tackle. At the moment, we're feeding it separately to the cereals, just to see if there's any difference, if there's any preference. You know, if they turn up and only clear one particular food, then obviously we know um, what we should be concentrating on. So it's a bit of an experiment for us, um, but clearly at the moment, the pigs seem to be enjoying it. With the food down, it's time to do some housekeeping. We need a safe passage up to the high seat and a clear line of fire to the food. The weather is all over the place. Blue skies then white out. 
but making the most of a clear break, I can talk through Ford's double cab contender. Okay, so we're gonna do a quick 60 second walk around of the Ranger and show a few of the key points. We're gonna start at the business end. This is first and foremost a pickup truck. Um, so we've got a good load bed capacity. Um, it comes standard with this roller cover, which is a great idea, except that in these weather conditions, it freezes. So we spent ages pouring boiling water in the lock to make sure that we could actually get in here. But in, in more clement conditions, uh, absolutely fine. See, we've got plenty of space in there. It's got about a ton of capacity, which is more than enough for most people. You can also get a uh, pop-up hard tonneau cover and of course a box back um, to give you the flexibility and the choice. As you can see, it's quite a lot of spangly chrome on the Wildtrak version, which is the top of the range model. Nice chrome bumper here, and you can see these little sensors. These are actually parking sensors, which is not the kind of kit you'd normally expect to find on a uh, pickup truck. Nice clear lenses on the, on the lights there. We've also got whopping great 18 inch alloy wheels that look really funky. Not ideal for snowy conditions like this, and probably not gonna be the first choice if you want one of these as a work vehicle, but they do look quite trendy. We've, in keeping with that kind of idea, we've got the, uh, the running boards here, graphics down the door, and when you open up, we've got nice glow-in-the-dark kick plates there. I'm sure you've probably noticed as well, we've got some rather funky orange piping and trim on the seats. We've got leather, Alcantara, all logoed up. Very, very trendy. Some of the other kit that you get, obviously, for styling purposes, we've got nice chrome on the, uh, the door mirrors. Inbuilt indicators, very nice, and at the push of a button, you can fold them in. Moving around now to the front of the vehicle, it's quite a striking looking machine. It's certainly got plenty of road presence, um, and thanks to the three litre Duratorque engine, it's actually really quick as well. 156 horsepower, loads of torque, surprisingly smooth for a pickup as well. Um, you never feel that this thing's short of power. Um, and uh, if you're listening, Santa, you want to pop one in my stocking, that'd be great. With the ball fed, we can again make use of the pickup with some essential Christmas shopping. It's funny how you discover that you've got more friends than you ever thought you had when you've got a vehicle like this on test. Uh, for example, at 8, 8 o'clock this morning when the phone went and David the cameraman decided he needed some assistance in transporting a Christmas tree. Um, but that's the point of these vehicles. They really are an all-in-one solution. Whether it's taking the kids to school, it's going hunting with your mates, or it's getting the Christmas tree back, they'll do everything. With another heavy snowfall, we have time to check out the interior. Okay, so while we're taking refuge from the, uh, the blizzard outside, talk you around uh, the, uh, the interior of the, uh, the latest Ford Ranger. Um, Obviously, we've seen that it's got a lot of working capacity, but this is the top of the range wild track model, um, and they certainly haven't been shy with uh, making it comfortable. So, we see that combination of kind of utility and luxury. We've got heated seats here uh, for both driver and passenger, and um, we've got air conditioning. We've got a six disc uh, CD player, which is MP3 compatible. Um, We've got nice leather and Alcantara seats, uh, all very swish. But we've also got off-road centre here, which tells us, should you really need to know, the angle of the dangle. So lateral angle, uh, front and rear angle, um, and a compass uh, if you absolutely need to know which direction you're travelling in. The Ranger comes with either a five-speed auto or a five-speed manual. We've got the manual uh, gearbox here, which is it's a really nice, crisp manual gearbox. Nothing wrong with it whatsoever. Um, it's also got switchable two and four wheel drive. Um, so in normal driving, we'd keep it in two wheel drive for best fuel economy and best handling. Um, but conditions like this, pull the lever back, you're in four wheel drive. Uh, and if the going gets really tough, across, up, and you're into four wheel drive, low ratio, because it's got a proper uh, low range transfer box on this. Um, which is obviously what you need for a vehicle that's going to be able to work hard as well as play hard. With the light going, we arrive at the high seat and we know we're going to be cold, at least minus five. I'll go to one high seat while Colin and David go to the other. The moon and the snow should give us a good view. A small fallow dough makes an appearance, but we want boar. I, on the other hand, have better fortune. 
and half an hour after last light, a young male boar comes to feed. Uh, I've been in the seat for probably less than an hour. I uh, heard a group of pigs approaching. Um, they took their time, they're pretty cautious tonight. Uh, saw a couple of animals start to move into the clearing and then freeze. Um, they look quite good sized animals. This is a, obviously a lot younger animal um, and it couldn't be bothered to wait around and check whether there's any danger. It came straight out to the food pretty much. Um, I thought it was a suitable, a suitable cull animal. Um, obviously with the snow behind it, it was quite easy to see it and uh, I was able to ascertain that it was a, a young male. Um, so yeah, took the shot and uh, that'll be some, some good eating, some meat for the landowner and hopefully something for us. Numbers are down there, aren't they, Yes, yeah, it was it was a sounder of only three. Um, this was the only immature male in the group, um, and I, I think you know from what Colin's been saying and from his experience at the, at the other seat, it, I can't see us pursuing these too much more this season. I think uh, you know that could be it, which is uh, it's a real shame because you know as you've experienced tonight, there's there's nothing much more magical than sitting under a full moon and waiting for a British wild boar. Um, but it's an increasingly rare experience these days, which is it's, it's a real pity. Back at base, I'm cracking on with the Gralic. It's a healthy young male, although definitely a porky porker. As you can see, it is an extremely fat pig. See the cover in here and inside the cavity. Um, that's as fat as I've ever seen a young male. Um, well, ever. Um, quite why it's that fat, I don't know. So oftentimes during the winter, you know, if, if the animals are I mean, the rot or if the conditions are hard, you think they'd be struggling for food. Whether or not there's that many shooters feeding them, um, that they've got just far more food than, than they normally would have, I don't know. Um, but that is certainly a fat little pig. The Ranger has been a superb all-rounder. Usable and comfortable, it's as happy in the supermarket car park as it is in the backwoods. A true do-everything machine.